This video is about how I scored 3000 on my UCAT, which is one of the UK's most competitive, time pressured, hardest medical school entrance exam. We'll first go through each section chronologically, being VR, verbal reasoning, DM, decision making, QR, quantitative reasoning, AR, abstract reasoning, as well as SJT, situational judgment. And we'll finally end off the video with general tips on the test day, as well as resources for the UCAT. So no bullshit, let's get straight into it. So for verbal reasoning, we have to do 44 questions in 21 minutes, and that results in around 30 seconds per question. That is not a lot of time at all, considering the nature of the questions of uh, reading comprehension. VR is definitely one of the hardest and toughest sections, and it's generally one of the most poorly done UCAT section. So the previous UK verbal reasoning average scores for 2021 is 586, for 2020 is 570. So from 2015 to 2021, all of the verbal reasoning scores are all below 600, which shows that VR is generally one of the most poorly done sections. Considering it's the first section of the UCAT, it can demotivate a lot of UCAT test holders. Let's talk about in general the strategies that would approach a VR question. So for example, here we have a verbal reasoning type of question. In general, it's a format two question. You have to check each option choice to see if they're correct or not. If D is a correct option, you have to check A, B, and C, which is a, a bit of an unfortunate one. Whereas format one questions, where you just simply find the fact because it gives you any keywords from the question itself, and you have to locate the fact. Now in general, there's this big debate with VR, whether you read the question first, or read the passage first. My approach and the most popular approach is actually read the question first. Time constraint of this section is just ridiculous. However, I do allow myself around five seconds or so at max uh, for each new extract, scan through for around five seconds to see what the structure and the context of the question is because it allows you to see if this extract is the type of extract you like. Because in general, for me, for example, I complete this like historical extracts or contexts because in general I don't have that much knowledge with historical essays or historical articles so in general most questions I cannot actually even guess using reasoning or common sense for me if I see a historical extract or an extract that's very very long then I'll instantly guess flag skip now to guess flag skip one of the most important tips that I have to give you is to familiarize yourself with the keyboard shortcuts. Please, please, please do not press the flag button ever or press the next button on the UCAT interface. To flag a question, we press Alt F. So Alt is the button in your keyboard and it's located at the bottom left corner. That is to flag and to skip or move on to the next question, we press Alt N. This is such a, such a crucial piece of advice that helped me out so much on my UCAT. And I don't really see that many people talk about it, about Alt F, Alt N. So if you familiarize yourself, take like 30 seconds or so, get your keyboard out and make sure you do have an external keyboard that is similar to what you will be using in the actual test day is you press Alt F, Alt N like this. So practice Alt F, Alt N like quick Alt F, N, Alt F, Alt N, Alt F, Alt N. So that when you see a extract consisting usually with five questions within each module that you don't like, for example, historical one or a long one, use your mouse, guess a random option. Could be A, could be B, could be C. I usually just go for just any random one and then press Alt F, Alt N in the fastest time so if you if you familiarize yourself with the keyboard shortcut guessing one question could take less than a second because the UCAT again especially with the VR is time pressured so you want to prioritize your time in getting the right questions with the right extracts that you like so alt F alt M so guess flag skip so now back to the debate about the reading the question or reading the article first. Now, as I've said before, my, my approach is, and the most popular approach, is to spend five seconds looking at the extract first to familiarize yourself with the structure and the context, and then jump straight to the question and see if it's a format one question where you just simply scan for information, search for the keyword, and nail your keyword finding skills. And keyword searching is the number one strategy 
for VR. So for example, let's look at option A. So again, let's scan through the article within five seconds. Okay, we know it's something about to do with ropes and uh, some properties of ropes down below here. That's it. Now we move on to the question. And this extract is one that I actually like. It's factual, not historical, very short. So I would definitely approach this and instead of using guess, alt F, alt N, I'll attempt the question. So here, go through each option step by step. However, there is one approach is if you do know the topic quite well, you can actually jump to option choices that are more likely to be true for you using your common sense. So some people say that, oh, well, don't use your common sense because the article would say something completely different. But obviously to save time, use your common sense. But for, uh, for this extract, I don't really know much about ropes and nylon. So I'll just go to option A and see what it is. So we first of all, identify keywords that you're searching for. So here it says nylon is stronger than propylene. So I would just straight, straight up, I'm gonna search for nylon. So I'm gonna go for the entire essay and just search for nylon. So here I can see nylon here. Now that is keyword searching. And do we have uh, polypropylene? Do we have polypropylene? Yes, we have polypropylene here as well. And I can instantly see next to polypropylene is that it says it is not as strong as nylon, which means that nylon is stronger than polypropylene, uh, which turns out is correct. However, do we know it is stronger than hemp? Uh, so we'll, we need to search for the keyword hemp, hemp, however you pronounce it. Um, so let's search for hemp or hemp. And I can see hemp here and it says the natural fibers tend to shrink uh, and then synthetic fibers are stronger. So that means it is actually correct. So we'll go for option A. So that is how you generally approach VR. For every new article, I would spend five seconds looking at it, decide if you want to do it, uh, and then obviously look through the context and the general structure of each paragraph so you know which paragraph you can jump in to for your keyword searching. Then I would straightly jump to the question. If it's a format one question where you just locate some facts, identify the keywords you're searching for, then scan the entire paragraph. Do not read it because I'll waste your time. Just scan it for the keyword and then read the lines in front of and after the keyword. In this case, with a format two question, locate the, like, with the same approach, locate the keyword and then obviously go through each option and deduce if it's correct or false, etc. So for decision making, this section is designed to assess how candidates can deal with logic and puzzles, how logical the candidate is in pressure. As for the timings, it is 32 minutes in total and one minute of reading instructions and 31 minutes for questions with 29 questions. It's still really time pressured. There are six question types. For example, we have logic puzzles, interpreting information, recognizing assumptions, probability, Venn diagrams, etc. Let's look at one of the types of questions. Basic structure is that, for example, there's a premise where A leads to B and B leads to C. So we can successfully conclude that A leads to C. This seems very obvious, but in questions, it would definitely trick you out. You can see that all fish have scales, can swim. This type of species, currently in bobtails, are unable to swim. So instantly I can see that it doesn't tell you it's a fish. So this is actually so unrelated to fish. So I can already see that it might trick you out. Right, so Carillion bobtails are a type of fish. We have no idea, are unable to swim. As a matter of fact, it could be it could be me, right? I could be Carillion bobtail and I can't swim. So you can't really conclude it's a type of fish. So no, are not a type of fish. Same logic, you don't know if it's a fish or not a fish. Have scales. Well, if they have, we don't know because even if they have, even if they have scales, they are supposed to be able to swim if it's a fish. So no, if it's a type of fish, it does not have scales. So if it's a fish and it does not have scales, that means it's unable to swim. If it does have scales, it can swim, but it tells us this guy cannot swim. So yes, we can actually conclude that. Sharks can swim, that is no relevance at all. Possibly in real life, we know that they can swim from these premises 
we have no idea. Now, with questions involving interpreting information from graphs, bar charts, etc., it's sort of similar to what you will get in quantitative reasoning with less calculation, more just interpreting and reading the graph. The whiteboard is really, really important in this section, especially with logic puzzles. For example, logic puzzles involving positions, how people are oriented around the table, and those can help you visualize if you just simply do a really quick sketch on your whiteboard, which you're given in the day of your UCAT exam. If there are questions that are taking way too long for you, for example, with Venn diagram questions, where you have to draw the entire Venn diagram out, could be very time consuming. So I would always leave that to the end. So just do guess, alt F, alt N. Probability type of question, this is more of the mathsy side of DM. Read the question very carefully and note down the key details. Work out the probability using what you learned in maths, and and all rules and discard in this side it's very important that you discard the options that are instantly wrong to you that you calculated so you can just eliminate any options that are completely wrong now let's move on to quantitative reasoning which is a mathy section now the number one tip that i would give for quantitative reasoning is use and know how to use a calculator properly on the ucat section i cannot stress how important the calculator uh, is if you don't know how you, you can use the memory functions and using your keyboard shortcuts work it out now because it saved me at least five minutes five minutes instead of going using a mouse which i see people still do using the mouse uh, to press m plus m minus or ac you can just use your keyboard. Of course, uh, you can just use a keyboard and a numpad. What I would uh, definitely recommend is get a keyboard with a number pad. So for my UCAT practicing session, I didn't use this keyboard. I bought a, a cheap Windows keyboard with a numpad at the side because I know that is a type of keyboard that I'll exactly get in my UCAT test day. And familiarize yourself with the number pad. In fact, with Medify, if you go on Medify, there is even a calculator game where you just practice typing in numbers and functions using the number pad and know your keyboard shortcuts for adding numbers into memory and removing numbers from memory and adding numbers and retrieving and recalling uh, numbers from memory because you'll be using that constantly because you have to jot down numbers and it's way quicker to add a number into memory into the calculator instead of jotting it down to your whiteboard and then retyping it onto the calculator now with quantitative reasoning we have 36 questions in 24 minutes so that gives us 40 seconds per question some questions takes like less than five seconds to do but some questions takes a ridiculous amount of time with algebra, heavy table reading. So you really have to stick with the time. The general time guideline that I used is 18 minutes remaining, I'm on the 10th question, 12 minutes remaining, I'm on the 19th question, and six minutes remaining, I'm on the 28th question. So here we have a typical QR question that you, you'll get. And so it says, snow leopard population in country A is 40% in country B, so instantly, I'm going to have to use algebra here because for me, it would be way quicker if I just work it out and just translate what the word is into mathematical symbols. So we have country A is 40% of country B. So A is 0.4B. The population of snow leopards in country C is 50% of that in country A. So we have C equals 05 a and if the population in country c is 520 okay so now we know it's 520 we can work out a and therefore we can work out b so let's do this very quickly so 520 equals 0.5 a so therefore we know a is double of 520 that's 1040 and then we know a is 0.4 b so 1040 equals 0.4 b so B equals 10, 40, and then you have to put this in your number pad. Make sure you press the slash button for divide and press 0 0.4, and that should give you 2600. And 2600 is E. Now let's look at abstract reasoning, which is sort of the hit and miss section where some 
some candidates really love this section, some candidates find it the weirdest section of all that's irrelevant to medical practice. For me, I actually quite like this section because it doesn't really involve much text. And however, it does take so much practice to get good at it. And Medify is perfect to just bash out tons of abstract reasoning. And then you'll eventually get better and better at recognizing different patterns. The patterns you, you want to scan for is there is an acronym called SCANS. And you want to look for shape, color, arrangement, number, and symmetry. For example, with number, we could look at the absolute number. There might be... Uh, for pattern A, it might be three shapes, and in pattern B, that will be five shapes. So that will be very easy pattern to look for. But again, you don't want to miss out the easy patterns as well. Uh, it could be odd or even number, more than or less than, or at least one of or none. And there are different types of weird rules or patterns that you have to keep in the back of your mind. Especially with Medify, that I find is that with Medify, the actual AR questions are harder than what you get in a real test. Which is sort of good in a way where it really prepares you for the worst of the worst with AR. But when you start doing AR, you realize how disgusting this section is and so how really specific some rules are. The biggest tip I would give you is that you have to go through all questions. When you mark the questions, look at which questions you got wrong and put that rule into a document. So for me, I put it in Notion here where I have a page for UCAP. What I did is when I was bashing out abstract reasoning and I got questions wrong, I put out all the different types of rules that I got wrong and therefore I put it in a list like that. So when I, before the day of my UCAT, I could just read through all this and keep it fresh in my memory. For example, the total number of right angles is odd. That is such a weird rule. And as I got better, I even put out the actual question as well so I could uh, visualize it. So for example here, if an imaginary line is drawn between the triangles, then it closes all the circles. Here, each box has a main color and a wedge of color with special rules. Here, for example, here, curved edge is facing the left side. And for set B, the curved edge is facing the right side. So I will never in my world look out for that where the curved edge is on the left or the right. But once I got it wrong, I put it in a document and therefore I could simply look out and list out all the possible different types of rules, combinations, patterns to look out for in the real test and automatically as you get better and better and just with practice, your mind just automatically thinks about these patterns and rules to look out for and you get quicker and quicker. And with abstract reasoning, it's 55 questions in 13 minutes. So it is very, very time pressured. So now let's look at situational judgment, which is the last section that you can't, and it's the least time pressured section. My recommendation is don't rush through it at all. You've got so much time to read through each scenario carefully. Each scenario you're given is associated with two to five additional scenarios that are linked to it. And you have to identify the key issue and the distractor within each scenario. Some good resources that I recommend definitely reading online is four pillars of medical ethics, autonomy, justice, beneficence, and non-maleficence. Now GMC's good medical practice is a PDF where you could just go online and read it and have an idea because it gives you a certain objective rules to follow. Now the trait of a good doctor according to GMC's is integrity, confidentiality, and I have to stress how important confidentiality is because this scenario always crops up. For example, revealing patients' truth and you definitely would never, ever give out any information regarding to patients without any permission. Professionalism, communication, recognizing your own limits and teamwork. Teamwork scenarios also pop up a lot. It's managing conflicts within, for example, a group project. So similar to abstract reasoning, I also made a list in regards to questions that I got wrong. So for example, here we can see that patient safety and care is most important and doctors should never ever rush through patients to reduce wait time. And it, it, it might seem obvious, but when you go through a scenario, going through a dilemma, it could be difficult to see if uh, a wait time versus patient safety, but patient safety should always come in as most important and most appropriate action to do. We have say causing conflict and starting arguments is usually always the least appropriate action. 
And if you're not qualified, for example, a medical student, it's very inappropriate to give that medical advice and always very appropriate to decline medical advice. So these are sort of the examples of these scenarios or dilemmas that you're given in situational judgment. And this sort of list is so important uh, to compile when you're going through situational judgment questions so you know if that's appropriate or inappropriate to do and you can apply this knowledge in your real UCAT because in your real UCAT you'll have completely different scenarios but it's all very similar to what you've done. You just have to apply your GMC's guide of good medical practice, your four pillars of medical ethics and make sure you prioritize patient safety, patient confidentiality, etc, etc. On your actual test day, relax. UCAT is not a memory test, it's not like something you just cram in the night before, like your actual exams. Whereas UCAT's more of a skill-based test, make sure your mind is relaxed and well-rested for the two-hour intense brain workout of the UCAT it is. A few hours before the UCAT, you could read through the list that you've compiled, as I've mentioned, for the abstract reasoning as well as situational judgment, so the patterns and the rules, as well as scenarios that and how you handle different scenarios and situational judgment. The hour before the UCAT, I just went around, had a little walk, make sure I registered early and just prepared and calmed down my mind and body for it. Make sure you're well hydrated and well fed because by the time that I reached my situational judgment, I actually felt a bit hungry. You don't want that happening in your UCAT. Long, complex carbohydrates to sustain your two hours. As for resources, if you want to access my Notion page of UCAT notes, including all of my abstract reasoning rules that I've compiled, as well as the situational judgment scenarios that I've compiled, as well as my digital good notes of the UCAT and the BMAT notes on my iPad, you can click the link down below. It'll go to my website, factorycall.com, and you can download it for free there. And by the way, on their website, you can also access completely free of charge chemistry, biology, and physics A-level notes there, where you can just download, select your topic, and you'll see all my notes on there. And I wish the best of luck for your UCAT exam. If you found this video to provide any value to you at all, please exchange some value by pressing the subscribe button down below. Click here for another one of my awesome videos, and I'll see you in the next video. Hasta luego.